Hey, what's up? How are you doing? How is your day? This is a place where we get all the information that we've been looking for, especially when it comes to traveling. When you see me with somebody else here, you know there's something new which is about to start. We're just about to hear a new message from someone who is more experienced maybe than I am on a certain field. And today we have someone here, a friend of mine called Uyen, all the way from Vietnam. She just came to say hi to me and I said, let me say hi to the world. Let the other people hear and listen what is about to be taught. So this is uh, my channel where I always give the best information on business, on travel and social media marketing. And you can't miss it because we're just about to get started. <whistles> then we just do a little bit of hi and then we that's tell not, them. <laughs> that's not really a little bit. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> hey, so Uyen, how mm. did you find yourself in Africa? Yeah, Africa, I know, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I'm, I'm amazed. I'm in Africa as well. Uh, yeah. It's really fun actually because I, I wanted to um, do a trip in Europe yeah. and then, but I couldn't get quite a long visa. Yeah. So I decided, no, I don't want to just stop there after mm. a month in Europe. I want to go somewhere else. Mm. And then, you know, Africa happened to be just right down here. So yeah. I booked my flight ticket to uh -huh. Kenya. Uh -huh. And um, and also um, two years ago, I made like a vision board yeah. of the places I want to go. Mm -hmm. And then there's a giraffe photo, yeah. uh, you know, mm -hmm. you're famous for the giraffe. Yeah. So that's when I put on my bucket list that Kenya one day then. Like, uh, and here I am. You, you know, something I discovered is that most of the people who come to Kenya, uh -huh. when they Google Kenya, all they see is animals and yeah. giraffes. I had another friend who came here and she, she was telling me, I want to see a giraffe, I want to see a zebra. Yeah. Like, what's, what's the fuss about zebra and giraffe? We always see them all the time. We don't see like it's a big deal. Yeah, but it's not a big deal for you, but it's, <laughs> it's a big deal for us. Because yeah. normally we just see gir giraffe and zebra in, you know, like a zoo. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, it's just something fascinating. And, mm -hmm. and, and, and also, mm -hmm. I think Africa is a new, it's an interesting continent. Uh -huh. You know, I told you before, right? Yeah. That people always refer to Africa as a place that needs the world's help. Uh -huh. And are very poor and yeah. lack fresh water and everything. Yeah. So I, yeah. I, I, I kind of want to to come and see and what... Confirm, is it really true? Yeah, or yeah. it's just what the media are, tell, are trying to tell us, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. But, and also I I have this bug for traveling yeah. and I know that I'm, if I get old, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be really lazy. Yeah. And you know, when you get old and you're lazy and you choose to just listen to the media and you know, I don't know, why the hell should I go yeah. to a place that is poor? Yeah. So that's why I try to go here as as early as possible in my life. Is, is it the first time that you're traveling or you've done it before? Uh, no, of course. Uh, who who goes to travel? Who goes to <laughs> Africa the first time they travel alone as a girl? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> okay, what, what, what was the first time that you traveled? Where? Um, I, I had I had my my bit of traveling mm -hmm. before after my graduation mm -hmm. uh, from university, but yeah. it was like exchange programs, mm -hmm. mostly exchange programs. So it's quite safe. Mm -hmm. You are taken care of. You are given money, something yeah. like that. But then my first real solo traveling experience was in Nepal mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, two years ago. All right. All mm. right. So. How did it happen? How did you plan? How did you just wake up one day and just say, I'm going to Nepal or, you know, was there some criteria that you used to choose Nepal? Uh, that's pretty much it though. <laughs> like, you just chose and said, I'm going to this. Mm. No, no, not that bad. <laughs> but, you know, like, um, mm. so I was, uh, before that, I was mm. having a dream. Mm -hmm. So I, I you, you know that, Went in a dream, and then you. I suddenly saw a breathtaking waterfall, yeah. and it was so beautiful, you know, to the point that I couldn't breathe, mm -hmm. you know, literally breathtaking, yeah. in my dream. Mm -hmm. And then I woke up, yeah. and a voice inside inside my head said Nepal, uh -huh. and I was like, Wow, 
Okay. I have to go and see the waterfall. Did you finally find see the waterfall? Uh, I saw a lot of waterfalls, but <laughs> so you don't know which one it but was. But not really that <laughs> thing. But I don't know. Yes, yeah, some mm -hmm. uh, higher power led me there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that's why I decided uh, let's go to Nepal then. But How, I couldn't go. How long go, did you stay there? But, mm, but two months. Two months. Yeah, but before that, I couldn't go yet because mm -hmm. I was, you know, stuck in my routines with jobs and responsibilities. Yeah. So I couldn't go right away. But you know, mm -hmm. it was in my head. So, and I think a lot of people have that too. Yeah, you know, yeah, sure. some point, some destination that is stuck mm -hmm. in their in their mind, but mm -hmm. they haven't had the time to do it yet. Mm -hmm. So, and I had to be patient as well. Oh. So I, I kept that in mind, but I yeah. kind of forgot about it for a while, and then something happened. You know when the time is right, yeah, I just pick my back, backpack, oof, off I went. <laughs> There's a question I wrote here and mm. I really wanted to ask you. How is it traveling as a young person? Um, hmm. Traveling in Africa is usually for work, retire and travel. Oh. Like old people. Okay. Now you're here, a young person and like you still are the peak of your life mm -hmm. why traveling now how, how is it traveling anyway i, I don't know just phrase okay. it your way mm. yeah but it's interesting that you don't associate the peak of your life with traveling mm -hmm. you know yeah. but i i don't know so that's the new thing i learned about africa as well because mm -hmm. all the travelers i've met mm -hmm. on my route yeah. they're all very young yeah. some of them are like 18. Mm -hmm. I, I, I was so embarrassed looking at them, you know, like when I was 18, I was stuck in my life with all the... So the other guys who still go even younger? They go... You, you are a couch surfing host, yeah, yeah, you, you yeah. must have seen a lot of young people, you haven't? I've, I've, I've seen, but I didn't really ask their ages. Oh no, but... like the mm. world is crazy, the world traveling mm. people, they mm. are crazy. Mm. They go for one year, two years when they're 18 or, mm. you know, in their university time. Mm -hmm. Like they take gap year, yeah. gap years yeah. and what went around. So I think that's very inspiring. How expensive is traveling, like in a nutshell? Like, uh, you know, most people think if I have to travel, I must have bundles of money. I uh, must really? have. Yeah, that, that's the notion. Do I look like I have a lot of money? <laughs> and that's why I'm asking, how, how expensive is it? Um, it can be expensive if you lack experience mm -hmm. and if you're used to your comfort. Mm -hmm. But if you, uh, you know, you. you you try to convince yourself to step out of your comfort a little bit. You don't stay in luxury hotel, luxurious hotel. Mm -hmm. Like so, no fancy hotels, no fancy meals. Then there are a lot of opportunities for you. Like mm -hmm. uh, so, couch surfing is a place. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a it's a it's one option. You can uh, go. Uh, go on there and have free accommodation in mm -hmm. a new place that you save a bunch of money. Mm -hmm. um, and um, hostels. Hostels, yeah, hostel can be a good one, mm -hmm. and you you know about work away, right? Yeah, yeah. So work, work away, away, and there's another one, woof woofing. I don't know, mm, but there there are sites. One. Maybe I can give you the link to yeah, put it sure, later. Sure, sure, but there there's some places that you can just go. Uh, you can sign up with an account, not very expensive, and then you can go to the local places, help out on the farm, volunteer, mm. and you have meals. Is, is and the free volunteer real big work or is this small, small thing? Um, I can't say because I heard that there are places that are real big work. Mm. But the places I've been to, they are quite okay, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't, I didn't really have to work a lot, even though I kind of wanted to, mm -hmm. but they didn't have lot, that much work for me. Mm -hmm. But but still, it's a, it's a good place, it's a good way to go, mm -hmm. because you, you got, get closer to locals mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. yeah, so that's back, that gets back to your question of how mm -hmm. is it traveling as a young person, it's yeah. much more fun. Yeah. Because you know, when you're old with, you know, a partner or kids yeah you cannot just go somewhere into someone's house and eat whatever they cook for you and do whatever they want you to do on the farm with the buffaloes you know <laughs> so it, it's really really fun and i think it's really worth it if you do your work traveling wow. when you're wow. young and to my other question here how do you budget for a trip mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so Flight is the most most costly one, so you have to save up for it, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, for other things like food, uh, what are all things? Food, transport, uh, 
and accommodation. Uh, yeah, those, those, those uh, yeah three, food, those. transport, and accommodation. So accommodation, like I said, you yeah. can just use couch surfing or work mm. away. Mm. Food, if you go to work away, you you have food. Yeah. Or, or otherwise, maybe you can just cook or you eat out or you travel to some cheap country. There are street vendors street around. Foods, yeah. yeah. Mm. So, mm. but you have to train your stomach first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and yeah, transport. Then you have to pay attention. Do you do hitchhiking for transport? Not yet. Never tried. Never tried. And not in <laughs> Africa. <laughs> and not yet. So I don't know. I, I don't know how it's gonna. Do you feel it or just? Uh, Never tried, just in general. Yeah, I, I have never tried. Uh, okay. Yeah. okay. But, but that that can also be a, a way yeah. because I I met my uh, a French couple yeah. who's uh, who are work travelers as well, and they hitchhike around the world. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Wow! Wow! Learning something. <laughs> I have another question here that I'll, I just wrote down here. When and where should you travel? When do you say now? This is the time that I'm going to travel. Mm -hmm. You know, like some of us, we plan and plan and plan. We hit the day and then we say, no, one more week. We hit the, the day, the year, and then we say, oh, we will still travel, you know, you know, and when uh -huh. and, and where, where. Of course, where you've told me how you try to do, but just give it in another more defined way. Mm. Uh, actually, for me, yeah. I'm not sure how old you guys are, but for me, the best uh, time to travel is from 18 to 20 something. Mm -hmm. That for me, uh -huh. because you know, the world is a big place. Yeah. You need to see it to see how small you are. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. also while traveling, you can find out a lot more about yourself. Yeah. And you open your mind, you talk to people, you get the real bit of what the real world, world really looks like, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. so it, it's perfect if you can manage yourself and manage to, to kick yourself out there and travel when you're 20 something. And, and I like I was still putting this question very clear is that we, we plan, of course, everybody plans. Mm -hmm. Everybody plans like, I'm going to travel next year. Next year comes, you never start. Mm. The other year start, comes, never start. You, you're still fixing things, you know, I'm still fixing this. Uh -huh. But other people, they plan and they say, this is the day and they're gone. H um, how do you handle that? Um, I don't know, wait, this question sounds like I need to activate my brain to answer it. When? Um, let me reflect a little bit. Do I plan? Uh, So All in my experience, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I have I choose a destination mm -hmm. and I put it as a, a priority. And you set a date or you just leave it open? I set a date. Depends. But you know, the, the problem, I'm not sure I don't have African insights. Yeah. But I think the, mo the problem that people have is that they do not put traveling as a priority mm. because they think other life responsibilities are more important. Getting a job, making money, mm. taking care of the family, those are more mm. uh, important things. Yeah. So that's that's where traveling loses, you know, uh -huh. because lo traveling is is viewed as a waste of time for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And that, I think that is the biggest biggest thing that stops people from traveling. It's not about planning and missing the deadline. It's mm. not about that. Mm. It's more about inside their heart they do not trust that they should travel uh -huh. you know so when and where choose a place mm -hmm. set a deadline yeah know that it's important for you to travel yeah and then follow the plan mm -hmm. follow whatever. so if it's three months and uh, we have one month remaining you start doing fast forward things yeah. quickly yeah. you know yeah you know, some people are just procrastinator. They just don't do things when there are no deadlines. So get yourself a deadline. Uh -huh. Whatever happens, go. <laughs> Something like that. And uh, are there a number of things that you've learned along the way and you say, this one, I, if I didn't move from my comfort zone, I could have never known this. Uh -huh. Are there some things that you don't necessarily need to mention, uh, in, in, but are there things that you've learned along the way and say for sure this one I learned it along the way there's no other way 
a lot but suddenly as I'm not sure which one to pick uh, mm, I meet people mm -hmm. yeah. and they teach me in a way it, that I never I could never expect uh, when I'm at home mm -hmm. um, It, it, it's really like you you just bump into people yeah. and you crashes with the world mm -hmm. to see and then you get hurt yeah. and then you see yourself shivering hurting mm -hmm. um, and then up oh, I know yeah. I think one thing I, I, I learned uh, when I travel that I could never know at home that is how insecure I am uh -huh. You know, yeah. because at home I'm so safe. I have my parents, my loved ones around. I have mm. a good job. I have everything. But then, you know, when you throw yourself in a new place, yeah. you start to see that. Wow, you have your fears. Your fears. Yeah. You have your insecurities, vulnerability. You have holes in your heart yeah. that you've been hiding. Yeah. You've been running away from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then, when you travel, you you really face it. Wow. Yeah, and then you have to pick yourself up. You have to take care of yourself. Nobody's gonna do that for you when you mm. solo travel. Yeah. So you have to, you know, man up or woman up, mm. and then you, you, you can know a lot more about yourself. I think I learned a lot more about myself. You somehow discover you, the inner you, the person you are. Yeah. When you're traveling. Um. The the discover the person you are when you're traveling is a general way to say it mm. but for me it was more like I discovered the parts of myself that were not seen when I'm mm. home mm. because I'm, I'm trying to think mm. maybe when you're home you have this kind of notion whereby you have your characters because people know you uh, mm. you know when you cry people will, oh yeah, yeah, but yeah, now yeah. you're in a place where you know if I cry Nobody's going to come for me, so yeah. I need to, you know, wear a brave face. And I didn't know I was this brave. I didn't know I yeah. could do this. Yeah. I didn't know exactly. I could stay. Mm? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because at home, uh, it's so comfortable. Yeah. You have friends at your disposal. Yeah. <laughs> but then when you're when you're out there, yeah, you have to take care of yourself, and and really, you you find yourself much braver than you think you can ever be. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's another question here. Um, the difference between traveling solo mm -hmm. and traveling as a group. Is it more better to travel solo or to travel as a group or with a buddy? Mm. Which one, you know, you're a solo traveler. Just for now. For now. But how, just give me the difference. Like sometimes you're confused. Should I call a friend? We go. Should I go alone? Mm -hmm. Should I go with a, with a group? Mm. I think depends on your purpose of traveling. Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, I want to travel to see the world, mm -hmm. but not just that. I also want to discover myself yeah. because I'm young mm -hmm. and I want to discover myself as much as possible, yeah. get to know myself. So you can tell if you go in a group, so you cannot just always be with yourself, you know? Mm -hmm. You cannot just say, oh, I'm tired, I, or you have to balance yourself out with others. Mm -hmm. So that's where your character, your personality has to compromise, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, but if your purpose is, I have to go to Kenya to see the safari, to, to, to see the giraffe and that's all, and see the landscape and that's all. Mm -hmm. I don't need to know myself, I know myself enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, then going a group is much more fun, and especially if you are a extroverted person. Yeah. Yeah, and a group they can you can save your transport, you can save your accommodation, you can save a lot of cost. Mm -hmm. So going in a group has that mm -hmm. benefit, advantages. All right. Let me ask uh, maybe just a final top up question. Mm -hmm. How do you make friends along the way? Because you know, now you you, uh, you don't have friends like from home. And yet, you still need to speak to people, you need to have a good time with people. How do you interact? How do you say, hello, it's me, listen to me, and people will listen to you? How do you make friends? Let me tell you it's an interesting thing. Yeah. You don't need to make friends. Friends bump into you. You cannot be on your own. Like, I mean, okay, I'm, t I'm, I'm using the phrase solo traveling, but you can yeah. never tr solo travel, really. Uh -huh. you, friends are all around and you just bump into them somehow, really. How? Like, okay, so are, are, are we friends now? 
Oh. I hope we are. We are enemies. Ah, we are friends. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I know no, nobody before I went yeah. to Africa, but mm. now I know you. Yeah. Through couch surfing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then I have another friend. Um, I think it's battery. No, 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 don't okay. worry. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, and now I and I have another friend uh, who was a border, border, border bike. Border, border guy, yeah. 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 yeah, and he was so helpful when I needed help. Yeah. And now we stay in contact. Wow, wow. So it's like wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, people are just bumping up and all that. And, and you know? the right people, yeah, let me yeah, tell yeah. you that. And of course, one thing I know about uh, this, maybe just as an add-on, is that It's, it hurts a lot because relationships of travelers last as long as a visa is valid. That's something that most coach suffers have told me like, oh, you're my really good friend, but my visa is about to expire. <laughs> I need to go. So we can only see each other on online and all that. Mm. And, you know, until, you know, that's, I think that's the only uh, bad side of when you're traveling. You, I don't you, agree. You, Is it? I don't agree. I have lifetime friends through traveling. But but you don't get to see them again. Like uh, I, you see them like I, I see them again. You it's a you, it's a flat word, okay? And that's controversial, but it's you can see people. Again. Have you have you seen some before? Like later after meeting them, and then you meet them again? Of course. Wow. That's how I make my lifetime friends. Seriously. From a different country, really from far. A different from half the world. Like I told you, I, I came here from Europe, right? Yeah. I was staying in Europe with a the French couple I told you about. Yeah. We met in Nepal, mm. and they went to Vietnam to so that we could uh, and then to visit Vietnam, and they stay at my place. Yeah. And then I went to Europe to mm. visit them, and um, they named their daughter mm. after my name. That's how lifetime we are. Wow, wow. It takes effort, of course. It takes effort. I, we, we talk to each other, we update each other on our life, but there are lifetime friendships. Awesome, I'm awesome. I'm so freaking sure. Before I, before I stop this video, um, I'm, I'm, I feel just so much uh, to ask, what is the one thing that can make people travel to Vietnam and see huh. like, What's this major thing that will make us keep from Africa to Vietnam? Food. Food. The best food. Uh -huh. And landscape. Food and landscape. Yeah. Natural, uh -huh. unspoiled landscape. Uh -huh. Food. Food. I oh, the I food. Like oh, I, even Vietnamese people miss the food. Even Vietnamese food are everywhere in Europe. You can never just have the right taste. You have to be in Vietnam for that. Oh Lord, I'm coming. Yeah, I'm you coming. have to come and you I'm have gonna to come be there well. to Vietnam. I'm going to be coming in the words of Jeff Koenig. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming there. Vietnam. Yeah, but get your stomach trained as well. Yeah, I, I'll train my stomach in case it runs and all that, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but mine is used to like, uh, you know, we eat things in the streets even though we're washing hands. Something called mutura. Mutura, uh -huh. you ever had mutura before? No. It's a meat which is uh, just in the streets, like a little bit dirty and, you know, your stomach is used. The only problem is if you eat mutura from a new base. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> anyway, guys, it's really been a pleasure being with you. Um, Uyen, it's, it's been a pleasure. I really appreciate. And uh, guys, uh, this is a place where you'll be getting much more stories like this one each and every time so make sure you subscribe there's a subscription button down there and click the notification uh, button as well so that you don't miss any video like this every tuesday thursday and sunday i'll be updating a new video so keep it locked and stay there just like always we do see ya and bye bye